Hello everyone! I am Annie, homeschooling mom to five with, I consider it three officially school-aged this year, two younger ones running around, and I have hopefully a homeschool tip for you guys today to kind of help with filing and dealing with the paper clutter because there can be so many papers, activities, worksheets, art pieces, all of those kinds of things necessary to get schoolwork done that we have to keep track of at least for the calendar year. And then depending on, you know, some of us like to keep things um, for many years as memories or records. Some of us have to because of the state we're in. Um, so it can be important to really kind of get a handle on paper. So let me share with you something that I started this year and I am like, wow, why have I never, why has this never clicked for me? I've seen it elsewhere in various ways and this is really just kind of like the perfect solution for us. So my kids, my school, well actually all five of my kids, including my preschooler and toddler, got a different colored composition notebook at the beginning of the year. I I got them as a set from Arteza. It was nice because I could buy it a little bit more in bulk and I just gave them all a color. They all have their own and we use this for everything paper related. So let me flip through a couple of these for you. I actually want to start with my youngest uh, student. So my kindergartner slash first grader. <laughs> yeah, we're those uh, crazy homeschool people that we're in combinations of grades for various reasons. Um, so she uses this less often because as, you know, kind of basically like your youngest student, she's still learning to write. She is, is learning to read. And so there's more workbook pages in her language arts that stays in a bound book. Um, and fewer things that we would have like a printed out activity page or, you know, she doesn't come over here and do spelling words or handwriting. That's not where she is yet. But we did for a while five in a row, which is a picture book literature based curriculum. Um, we have since stopped that. It was not a great fit for us this year. And so what we had here was I would go online and I would print out different activities. So to go along with the story of Ping, um, this one was a coloring activity and is great for younger children. This was kind of a counting one, studying about China, which is where the story takes place. So we got a little bit of geography and culture. We moved on to Madeline, which is set in Paris, France. So we got to do some of that in different activities. And then this is what I love, okay? So a lot of people will use maybe like a three ring binder. I personally have never loved three ring binders. It's something about the size and the the bulk and it doesn't feel as good as holding a book in your hand. It's totally like a weird tactile preference thing. But one thing I absolutely love is instead of just taking these full size sheets of paper and punching them into a three ring binder, my little ones especially got an opportunity to use scissors. So they got to practice their cutting skills, their pasting skills, as well as some writing and their coloring and whatever else the activity was. So for this child, she is probably not going to use this as much now that we had kind of dropped the, that subject um, and we're going in a different direction. Most of her stuff are hands-on activities or workbook pages built in her math and language arts, but we still have this for various activities and it's a great place to keep everything. So I have like the whole year in here I can flip through it, see what she's done, see how she's progressed, keep track of things instead of having papers everywhere, trying to file them. They're all right here. Now, my older two are eight and 10, and they are definitely heavier on the writing and different things that we have going on. Um, I often pair them together when we're doing something like history. So you'll see they're doing the same kinds of maps and workbook pages that go along with our history. Um, even though they're in different levels of language arts, they have the same um, like curriculum. They It comes from the same company. So the format is similar and they both have spelling words. So let me just show you some of this. They're almost the same. We did an Apple unit. I love that you can sketch right on here. You can draw right on here, but it still has the lines because handwriting is something I'm really trying to work on with my two kids this year because they're right at that age where it's not really hard anymore. And I'm starting to be a little bit nitpicky so that they grow into adults who have legible writing. 
So they have handwriting activities in here. We do, well, we had been doing and they just finished draw right now, which you draw something and you write about it uh, as you do your handwriting. They absolutely love it. But I think, like I said, we need to improve our handwriting and, and really focus on that this year. So I might be going in a different direction. And I, I think we're gonna start learning cursive. They have spelling lists, they practice their spelling words. Our history oftentimes will have a coloring page or some sort of activity. That's what I like to do. And then they cut it out and they paste it in. You'll see some maps here in a minute. So more spelling. Uh, this is my son. Oh, is this my son's? I'm pretty sure it is. Yes. Uh, so with his language arts, he often will have to write the six main points of something that he read. So he had to copy that down. Maybe he'll copy a verse. That looks like he... Oh, you know what? That was for Bible. I had them draw some sort of illustration. Um, another thing that we're working on is labeling. So making sure they have their name and the date, which it's not here, and then writing what it was. Is it language arts or history? Uh, sometimes I do dictation, which is an opportunity for kids to practice the, the skills of listening, hearing, remembering and writing. And so they're in the beginning stages of, of their ability to do that for longer sentences. They will do activity pages like this. Sometimes um, this will be one of the last things we do in the day and we're really trying to like hurry on to lunch or hurry on to whatever else. So I'll say, you know what, just take your thing, fold it, stick it in your notebook and the next time we're in this notebook, you can paste it in in the next available spot. So we've got a lot of that. Let me flip through here. See, more handwriting, more spelling. That is definitely the bulk of what they use it for. Let me find something else. So here we've got some maps. So we've actually glued that in and, and it was too difficult to cut it down to fit on this page and actually have all of the maps. So what we do is we just glue it in and we fold it. It works wonderfully. Here's one that he did not get to glue in yet. And that's fine too to a certain extent because it's right here. That's what I love, it's right here. It's enjoyable to flip through. It's wonderful to see the progress. I, I love this. Oh, I think we have some glue that's not working very well because this is not the first thing that I'm pretty sure he had glued in and it came off. So maybe our glue is on its last leg. But um, yeah, I love it. I love looking at this. It'll be so fun at the end of the school year, I think, to flip through these. Oh, here he had to write a little bit of a summary on uh, the Boxcar Children, chapter three. So labeling what it is so we can remember what it is. More handwriting. Um, it'll be so fun to flip through this. See how the handwriting has improved. See how the drawing has improved. See how everything, uh, remembering what we learned in history or other subjects like that. Um, I'm just, I, I love this method. My kids love this method. It works really well. And to have everything in one is making it so much easier to keep track of everything because all I have, like each of my kids has a notebook and it's kind of looking like we're halfway through this book and we're almost done with like the first quarter. So it's kind of looking like we'll probably end up with two notebooks per my older kids by the end of the school year if we kind of keep up with that same pace. But if I have four of these on the shelf, that is so much less space than giant chunky workbooks. It's so much less space than three ring binders and it will really work well. However long or short, I'm gonna keep these um, as like a portfolio. So real quick, it, it's kind of redundant because my daughter is basically doing the same kinds of assignments. So that, you know, the Apple project sketching, um, she has to write different things in her language arts, but she still has things. She still does her spelling words the same, even though they're different lists. They were both using the same handwriting book because they're on about the same level. So just more things. Labeling what it is, she had, um, along with her language arts, she reads 101 Bible story, or 101, 101 Bible stories. She wrote the date. So she's a, she's a little bit more meticulous um, than my older son. Um, so she'll often remember to do things like that. And again, that's something we're working on. Oops, she skipped, she skipped some pages. She can go back in and fill those in. So yeah, just uh, documentation of her work, a place to keep everything, a place to review everything, 
I don't have stacks of paper clutter anywhere. I always know whose is whose. If they forget to write their name on the top, I know whose book is whose, their names are on the book. Um, it's just a really simple way to keep all of my kids' stuff together. And then if I did want to keep this as a portfolio, it doesn't take up much space. Um, it's just a really great system, I feel. And I'm kind of excited to get through the school year and then maybe have a day where they get to just like take their, take their portfolio and flip through it, where they can take this and remember all of the things that we studied. They can see how their own handwriting or drawing or whatever else improved as the year went on. They can feel good about their accomplishment accomplishments they can feel like they've progressed and enjoyed the journey and you can see this kind of sampling of the school year I think that would be great I think that would be a wonderful way to celebrate the end of the school year and I cannot wait to fill these up even more and see how they are at the end so I hope this inspired you to do this as a method to keep the paper clutter filing down and more organized and simple, or maybe it inspired you to do something similar and have your own version of it. Either way, let me know in the comments if this was helpful and if you would like to see more organizing and kind of figuring out homeschooling you know, paperwork and, and, and keeping track of things, types of videos in the future. And I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks so much. Bye.